Welcome back everybody, I'm Tommy McCarthy and this is Let's Talk Cyber. We're going to keep this one serious. It's a pleasure to welcome back our good friend from Tech Gem, Ian Jemski. Welcome back to Let's Talk Cyber. Hi Tommy, how are you? Good, thanks buddy. It's always a pleasure to have you on Let's Talk Cyber. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about cyber resilience in your space, Ian. Um, with what's going on right now in the critical national infrastructure um, industry especially. But um, we did speak previously just about the perception of cyber resilience. And obviously the term cyber resilience is a very hot topic just now within the critical national infrastructure. What do people need to understand about the terms of being cyber resilient, Ian, from your own point of view? That's the first question. And then it's going to lead me into my second question about TechGem and TechGem's software platform, Unity. Why was Unity developed and what can it do to help organizations? So first of all, Ian, cyber resilience within critical national infrastructure. What, what on earth do people need to understand about cyber resilience? Yeah, um, thanks, Tommy. Really appreciate it. So, so you're quite right. You know, the term cyber resilience it's certainly a hot topic right now, and there are a lot of people talking about it. And ultimately, it's a very simple concept in theory, and that is it's being able to operate your business as usual in the advent of a cybersecurity incident. Now, whilst it sounds simple in theory, as we always know in industry, putting things into practice aren't quite as straightforward as they would seem. And I think a great example of this has been seen with the, the recent cybersecurity attack on the multinational retailer Marks and Spencers um, that occurred over the Easter weekend earlier this year. Um, that had a massive impact on their business operations. Their online shopping services have been suspended, were suspended for, for three months. I think they only got them back online late in July, and this happened back at Easter in April. There were empty supermarket shelves and limited product availability across their clothing uh, lines, etc. Um, you know, the financial impact on that is estimated to have been around the 300 million pounds mark. So when we talk about cyber resilience, it's being able to operate um, as normally as possible in the advent of a cybersecurity incident, a cybersecurity attack. Um, and ultimately, that's what it's all about. So, yes, it sounds simple in theory, but putting it into practice isn't as straightforward as it sounds. And that's where TechGem Unity comes into play, and TechGem in general. So, as you know, we've been around a long time. In fact, actually, Tommy, we're celebrating our 20th birthday this year as, as an organization, as a company. So we've been working with organizations in the critical national infrastructure space, operators of essential services, helping them to understand their cybersecurity risk. And ultimately, that's what this is all about. And this is what cyber resilience really ties into. This month, we're actually launching a brand new version of Tech Gym Unity, and we've got a brand new feature, which uh, is a comprehensive risk management platform that helps to address the challenges of becoming cyber resilient. So Tech Gym Unity's new risk management feature walks you through the process of identifying and classifying critical and key systems to your essential business services, and it helps to determine cyber risks on the basis of identified vulnerabilities and known threat actors that can exploit those vulnerabilities. It then incorporates that workflow, aligns to international cybersecurity standards and international risk assessment and risk management frameworks. In addition to that, it provides a risk register and action tracker to provide a comprehensive risk management platform that tracks, tracks risks throughout the life cycle of your business operations. The, the metrics that we provide within the dashboards um, are so important to board level executives so that they can make key business decisions for cyber resilience. Ian, you know, it's bizarre, actually. Uh, it's been a day of podcasts, and I spoke to uh, an industry leader in cyber resilience insurance, and boardroom responsibility is now at the forefront of everybody's decision-making process. The board need to take more responsibility. They need to be leading by example when it comes to responsibility around the threats that all companies face. It's interesting when you talked about cyber so uh, risk management, Ian, I should say, yeah. What's the difference in, in your own world between risk management and risk assessment? Educate me a little bit more around risk management versus risk assessments. 
Yeah, so both have a place, both are very important. And a risk assessment is part of that overall risk management process. So whereby a risk assessment is a point in time exercise where you identify vulnerabilities, threats, ultimately classifying your risks. Um, risk management is a continuous process that changes on a regular basis. It doesn't stop still. So risk assessment's absolutely key to the overall risk management process. Risks change over time. Risks are fluid. The, the cyber threat landscape is fluid. And that's where the shift from risk assessments, we've seen it, regulators, industry, legal obligations, insurers, they want organisations or they have wanted organisations in the past to carry out an annual risk assessment. Now that's all well and good, but actually the minute you introduce a new system, a process or a technology into your environment, that changes, potentially changes the risks that you may now have that you hadn't seen when you carried out that last risk assessment. So being able to dynamically risk assess as part of an overall risk management process is extremely important. The last thing I think I'd want to make on that is that, you know, risk management is about visibility as well um, and visibility to key stakeholders and making sure that um, your your business leaders your board level execs understand risks so that they are able to take them into consideration when they're making decisions about the business about where to invest and what to do from a business function perspective if i now now that i've got that on board and i'm going to take a step back before we go forward and yep. just reflect what you've just told me uh, onto the the capability of the uh, TechGem software platform Unity. It's going to give me a real time overview of the risk exposure. Is that correct? The risk exposure to our operations, so that we can visibly see um, w where the alignment is towards risk. Would that be correct? Yeah, absolutely. So we built in um, some simple yet yeah, beautiful dashboards, risk management dashboards um, that classify your total number of risks. We score those risks. We prioritize those risks. Um, what are your te top 10 risks? But risks in themselves are no good without actions assigned to reducing those risks. So we also make action tracking visible within the dashboards because ultimately, when risks are identified, somebody needs to do something about them, unless you accept that risk. But again, you need that visibility. And, and those dashboards provide that visibility to everybody who's involved in the risk management process, from those actually closing out actions assigned with reducing risk to those people who need to make investments from the board level and so that they can understand wherever they sit within the organization, what that risk is and what's being done to reduce those risks so that we can uh, continue our business and, and ensure the business runs optimally. This is a really interesting tool, Ian, for the simple reason that over the last few years, we've engaged with a variety of very senior leaders in, in different industries to understand, as part of their entire appetite for risk, to understand what's acceptable to organizations when it comes to risk. And quite a lot of organizations now are putting a resource to one side and putting a as kind of budget to one so side towards acceptable risk yeah. in when it comes to malware attacks, when it comes to ransomware attacks, when it actually comes to fines from regulators, mm -hmm. some major organizations are looking at the resource required to improve on what they've got to make it more, more efficient for mm -hmm. obviously protecting the organization's networks. But there's always going to be that allocation towards risk, appetite for risk management yeah. and acceptable risk. So tools like Unity, I see providing a great benchmark for people to be able to say, look, this is the picture, this is what it looks like, and this is where we are going to be at risk if we don't improve. So I can see this being really advantageous, Ian, from, from a software perspective. So hats off to you and the team at TechGem. I guess for me, looking at simple tests, at steps, because what we need to do is give people, um, help them not lose too much sleep. So yeah. we've got to give them advice and guidance. So what would be the simple steps that you would recommend 
that people could take towards shift, you know, shifting towards becoming more cyber resilient. So give us some some nuggets, Ian. Give us some a little yeah. bit of free advice. So I don't want an invoice in the post. <laughs> I just want some free advice from you and Tech Gem about yeah. simple steps people could take to become more cyber resilient. So for too long, cybersecurity has been about responding to cybersecurity incidents and cybersecurity uh, attacks. And first and foremost, you know, my advice is that people need to, to have a mind shift from being reactive to being proactive. And what does that mean in, in practice and some simple first steps? I think one of the challenges that we've seen is around vulnerability management and that people have focused too much on tackling vulnerability management as, as a problem, whereas they aren't thinking about the actual risks. So for example, let's put this into context. You've got a system and it's got a known software vulnerability that can be exploited over the network. That vulnerability is scored as um, severe, so 10 out of 10, 9.9 .9 out of 10. It's a very severe vulnerability, okay? What we've seen in the past is people taking, putting a lot of effort into mitigating those, those types of vulnerabilities when actually they're missing the point. So for example, if that system isn't connected to a network, well, what's the actual risk? Well, the risk of it being exploited over the network is extremely low because it's not connected. So I think moving a mind, the, the mindset from that vulnerability management perspective to a, a real risk management perspective is absolutely key. And part of that, is understanding and managing your risks to ensuring you're, you're reducing them and you're prioritizing them against your essential business functions. And again, I like to use simple examples. Say you've got a document management system. It contains all of your planned startup and shutdown procedures, and that's stored online. Now, if you lose that system due to a cybersecurity incident, can you safely shut down or start back up your plant? And what's the consequence of that? You know, if you've got a clear process of identifying those risks to the business before you even think about cyber, then that will help you to make it much easier to identify and address. Yeah, you're, you're right, Ian. I think sometimes people miss the, miss the most important thing. It's about risk management, management, isn't it? It's about understanding what it's going to take for the organization to continue operating when it's experienced some form of malicious attack, malware, phishing, whatever. So you're absolutely right. Definitely understanding the risk and prioritizing risks. So, you know, would you say that the simple step would be just to review what they've got in place and prioritize what ne is necessary to ensure that they continue to function? Would you say, did I take that right? Would that be the right sort of yeah. guidance? So, so the first place I would start is look at all of your assets your si on a system by system basis and, and classify them. Do, does your business need this particular system to continue operating? If it's a point of sale system, yeah, in a small shop, can you transact with customers if you haven't got that system? Well, if the answer is yes, you can use cash, then you understand, understand that risk. If you say, no, we're a cashless business, uh, then you're gonna have to close the store. So on a very simple basis is classify those systems in terms of um, essential business services. And once you've done that, you can clearly, quite, quite clearly and easily identify where you need to put some focus on, um, onto protecting those systems. Great, Ian. Honestly, that's such a simple, you said it, keep it simple. Yeah. Keep it simple for stupid. And I don't mind admitting it, sometimes we do try to complicate things when it comes to this black art of cybersecurity. It's not, you're absolutely right, Ian. Really appreciate your input today, Ian. The final thing for me is, is Tech Gem Unity the the new version? Is it is it is it ready now? Is it is it up and live? Can we can we access it right now? That's right. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we're launching it uh, this month. It's going to be available to our existing customers and new customers. We're launching with um, webinars, demos, and we'll be running a full marketing campaign. And if anybody is interested in finding out more, you know, please do reach out to myself or our team, and we'd be more than happy to provide more information. Great, Ian. Well, listen, we'll make sure we share the link the minute the, the new version of Unity is up and live. And hopefully you'll be joining us later on early, early September. Hopefully our delegates can get to, you know, hands on view, a deep dive into Unity. So, Ian, as ever, it's a great pleasure hosting you on Let's Talk Cyber. All it remains for me to say is Ian Jemski, CEO, founder of Tech Gem. Thank you so much for joining me on Let's Talk Cyber. Thank you as always, Tommy. It's been a pleasure. Cheers, Ian. Thanks.